Hello and welcome to the Bible with Fresco. I am your host slash narrator Shenandoah Fresco, and today we are going to be covering Judges 19 through 21, which will conclude Judges, as a matter of fact. Um, let's see, and Luke 7 31 through 50. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and recognition in speech, so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and those who have tuned in today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. A Levite and his concubine, Luke 19. In those days, Israel had no king. Now a Levite, who lived in a remote area in the hill country, Ephraim, took a concubine from Bethlehem in Judah, but she was unfaithful to him. She left him and went back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judah, after she had been after she had been there four months. Her husband went to her to persuade her to return. He had with him his servant and two donkeys. She took him into her parents' home, and when her father saw him, he gladly welcomed him. His father-in-law, the woman's father, prevailed on him to say. So he reminded, he remained with him three days, eating and drinking and sleeping there. On the fourth day, they got up early, and he prepared to leave. But the woman's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh yourself with something to eat, then you can go. So the two of them sat down to eat and drink together. Afterwards, the woman's father said, Please stay tonight and enjoy yourself. And when the man got up to go, his father-in-law persuaded him. So he stayed there that night. On the morning of the fifth day, when he rose to go, the woman's father said, Refresh yourself, wait till afternoon. So the two of them ate together. Then, when the man with his concubine and his servant got up to leave, his father-in-law, the woman's father, said, Now look, it's almost evening. Spend the night here, and the day is nearly over. Stay and enjoy yourself. Early tomorrow morning you can get up and be on your way home. But unwilling to stay another night, the man left and went toward Je Jebus, that is Jerusalem, with his two saddled donkeys and his concubine. When they were near Jebus and th the day was almost gone, the servant said to his master, Come, let's stop at the this city of the Jebusites and spend the night. His master replied, No, we won't go into the, any cities whose people are not Israelites. We will go on to Gibeah. He added, Home, let's try to reach Gibeah or Ramah and spend the night in one of those places. So they went on, and the sun sat as they neared Giba in Benjamin. There they stopped to spend the night. They went and sat in the city square, but no one took them, them in for the night. That evening an old man from the hill country of Ephraim, who was living in Giba, the inhabitants of the place where Benjamites were Benjamites, come in from his work in the fields. When he looked and saw the traveler in the city square, the old man asked, Where are you going? Where did you come from? He answered, We are on our way from Bethlehem to Judah, to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim, where I live. I have been to Bethlehem in Judah, and now I am going to the house of the Lord. No one has taken me in for the night. We have both straw and fodder for our donkeys and bread and wine for ourselves, you, your servants, me, the woman, and the young man with us. 
we do not need anything. You are welcome at my house, the old man said. Let me supply whatever you need, only do not spend the night in the square. So he took him into his house and fed his donkey. After they had washed their feet, they had something to eat and drink. While they were enjoying themselves, some of the wicked men of the city surrounded the house, pondering on, pounding on the door. They shouted to the old man who owned the house, Bring out the man who came to you, your house, so we can have sex with him. The owner of the house went outside and said to them, No, my friends, do not be so vile. Since this man is my guest, do not do this outstanding, outrageous thing. Look, here is my virgin daughter and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now, and you can use them and do to them whatever you wish. But as far as this man, do not so, do, don't do such an outrageous thing. But the men would not listen to him, so the man took his concubine and set, sent her outside to them. And they raped her and abused her throughout the night. And at dawn they let her go. At daybreak the woman went back to the house where her master was staying, fell down at the door, and lay there untie until daylight. When her master got up in the morning and opened the door of the house, he stepped out to continue on his way. There lay his concubine, fallen in the doorway of the house. With her hands on the threshold, he said to her, threshold, with her hands on the threshold, he said to her, get up, let's go. But there was no answer. Then the man put her on his donkey and set out for home. When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubines limb by limb into twelve parts and set them into all the areas of Israel. Everyone who saw it was saying to one another, Such a thing has never been seen or done not since the day the Israelites came up out of Egypt. Just imagine what must be, what he must do something, so speak up. We must do something, so speak up. The Israelites punished the Benjamite. Judges 20 Then all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and from the land of Galeed, came together as one and assembled before the Lord of Mezpah. The leaders of the people of the tribes of Israel took their places in the assembly of God's people, 400,000 men armed with swords. The Benjamites had heard that the Israelites had gone up to Mezpah. Then the Israelites said, Tell us how this awful thing happened. So the Levite, the husband of the murdered woman, said, I and my concubine came to Geba in Benjamin to spend the night. During the night the men of Geba came after me and surrounded the house, entering, intending to kill me. They raped my concubine, and she died. I took my concubine, cut her into pieces, and sent one peace to each region of Israel's inheritance, because they committed this lewd and outrageous act in Israel. Now, all you Israelites, speak up and tell me what you have decided to do. All of the men rose up together as one, saying, None of us will go home. Not, uh, no, not one of us will return to his house. But now, this is what we'll do to Geba. We'll go up against it in the order decided by casting lots. We'll take ten men out of every hundred from all the tribes of Israel. 
and a hundred from a thousand, and a thousand from ten thousand, to get provisions for the army. Then, when the army arrives at Gibbon in Benjamin, it can give them what they deserve for this outrageous act done in Israel. So, all the Israelites got together and, unti and united and united as one against the city. The Israelites, the tribe of Israelite, <laughs> the tribe of Israel sent messengers throughout the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What about this awful crime that was committed among you? Now turn those wicked men of Gibra over to us, so that we may put them to death and purge the evil from Israel. But the Benjamites would not listen to their fellow Israelites. From their t towns they came together at Geba to fight against the Israelites. At once the Benjamites mobilized 26,000 swordsmen from their town, in addition to 700 able young men from those living in Gebash, or Gebesh. Among all these soldiers, there were seven hundred select troops who were left hand handed, each of whom could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Israel, apart from Benjamin, mustered four hundred thousand swordsmen, all of them fit for battle. The Israelites went up to Bethel and inquired of God. They said, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Benjamites? The Lord replied, Judah shall go first. The next morning the Israelites got up and pitched camp near Geba, and the Israelites went out to fight the Benjamites and took up battle positions against them in Geba. The Benjamites came out of Geba, and cut down 22,000 Israelites on the battlefield that day. But the Israelites encouraged one another and again took up their positions where they had stationed themselves the first day. The Israelites went up and wept before the Lord until evening, and they inquired of the Lord. They said, Shall we go up to any, shall we go up again to fight against the Benjaminites? Or our fellow Israelites? Then the Israelites drew near to Benjamin. And the second day, and this time, the when the Benjamites came out of Gibbon to oppose them, they cut down another 18,000 Israelites, all of them armed with swords. Then all the Israelites, the whole army, went up to Bethel, and where they sat weeping before the Lord, they fasted that day until evening, and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. And the Israelites inquired of the Lord, In those days the Ark of the Covenant of Ministering before it, they asked, Shall we go up again to fight against the Benjamites, our fellow Israelites, or not? The Lord responded, Go for tomorrow, I will give them into your hands. Then Israel sat out, set an ambush around Geba. They went up against the Benjaminites on the third day, and took up positions against Geba, as they had done before. The Benjaminites came out to meet them, and were drawn away from the city. They began to inflict casualties on the Israelites as before, so, the, uh, so that about thirty men fell in the open field and on the roads. The one leading to, ba leading to battle and the other to Geba, while the Benjamites were saying, We are defeating them as before, the Israelites were saying, Let's retreat and draw them away from the city to it, to the roads. All the men of Israel moved from their places and took up positions at Bar-Tamar. 
and the Israelites ambush charged out of its place on the west of Gibeon. Then 10,000 of the Israel's able young men made a frontal attack on Gibbon. The fight was so heavy that the Benjaminites did not realize how near disaster it was. The Lord defeated Benjaminites before Israel, and on that day the Israelites struck down 25,100 Benjaminites, all armed with swords. Then the Benjaminites saw that they were beaten. Now the men of Israel had given way before Benjamin, because they re rallied on the ambush they had sent near Gebba. Those who had been in ambush made a sudden dash into Gebba, spread out, and put the whole city to the sword. The Israelites had arranged with the ambush that they should send up a great cloud of smoke after the, uh, from the city and then the Israelites would counterattack. The Benjaminites had began to inflict casualties on the Israelites, about thirty, and they said, We are defeating them as in the first battle, but when the column of smoke began to rise from the city, the Benjaminites turned and saw the whole city going up into smoke. Then the Israelites counterattacked, and the Benjaminites were terrified, because they realized that disaster had come on them. So they fled before the Israelites in the direction of the wilderness, but they could not escape the battle, and the Israelites who came out of the towns cut them down there. They surrounded the Benjaminites, chased them, and easily overran them in the vicinity of Geba on the east. Eighteen thousand Benjaminites fell, all of those violent fighters, as they turned and fled toward the wilderness to the rock of Rimon. The Israelites cut down five thousand men along the road. Along the roads, sorry. They kept pressing after the Benjaminites as far as you can get them, and struck down those thousands, two thousand more. On that day, 25,000 Benjaminite swordsmen fell, all of them violent fighters, but 600 of them turned and fled into the wilderness to the Rock of Ramon, where they stayed for months. The men of Israel went back to Benjamin and put all the towns to the sword, including the animals and everything else they found. All the towns they came to, across, they set on fire. Wives for the Benjaminites. Benjamites, wives for the Benjamites. Judges 20. One, Judges 21. The men of Israel had taken an oath at Mezvah. Not one of us will give his daughter in marriage to a Benjamite. The people went to Bethel, and where they sat before God until evening, re res raising their voices and weeping bitterly. The Lord God of Israel, they cried, Why has this happened to Israel? Why should one tribe be missing from Israel today? Early the next day, the people built an altar and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Israelites asked, Whom from all the tribes of Israel has failed to assemble before the Lord? For they had, for they had taken a solemn oath that anyone who failed to assemble before the Lord, as Mesfah was to, the, to be put to death. Now the Israelites grieved, for the tribe of Benjamin, their fellow Israelites. Today, one tribe is cut off from Israel, they said. How can we prove, how can we provide wives for those who are left since we have taken an oath by the Lord not to give them any of our daughters in marriage? 
Then they asked which one of the tribes of Israel failed to assemble before the Lord at Mesbeth. They discovered that no one from Jebush Galid had come to the camp for the assembly. For when they countered for when they counted the people, they found that none of the people of Jabesh Galid were there. So the assembly sent 12,000 fighting men with instructions to go to Jebesh Galid and put the sword and put to the sword those living there, including the women and the children. This is what you are to do, they said. Kill every male and every woman who is not a virgin. They found among the people living in Jabesh Galid four hundred young women who had never slept with a man, and they took them to the camp at Shiloh in Canaan. Then the whole assembly set an offer of peace to the Benjaminites at the Rock of Ramon. So the Benjaminites returned to that at that time and forgiven the women of Jabesh Galid, who had been spared. But there were not enough of them, uh, enough for all of them. The people grieved for Benjamin because the Lord had made a gap in the tribal tribes of Israel, and the elders of the assembly said. With the women of Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjamites' survivors must be have wives. Uh, they must have heirs. They said so, and the tribe of Israel was not wiped, would not be wiped out. We can't give them our daughters as wives since with Israel since we Israelites have taken this oath cursed be anyone who gives a wife to the a Benjaminite but look there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh which lies north of Bethel east of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem the south of Libaneth so they instructed the Benjaminites, saying, Go and hide in the vineyards, and watch when the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards, and each of you sees one of them to be your wife. Then return to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers complain to us, we will say to them, do us the favor of helping them, because we did not get wives for them during the war. You will not be guilty of breaking your oath, because you did not give your daughters to, uh, to them. So that is what the Benjaminites did. While the young women were dis dancing, each man caught one of the one and carried her off to be his wife. Then they returned to their inheritance and rebuilt the towns and settled in them. At that time, the Israelites left the place, left that place and went home to their tribes and clans, each to his own inheritance. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. Okay, that concludes Judges completely. Tomorrow we'll start Ruth. Uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, we're going to continue on now with Luke seven thirty-one through 50. Jesus went, to, went on to say, What then can I compare the people of this great generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out on each other, calling out to each other, we played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came 
neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and you say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is prov proved right by all her children. Jesus anointed by a single woman. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with a alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at the feet at his feet weeping she began to wet his feet with her tears then she wiped them with her hair kissed them and poured perfume on them when a pharisee who had invited him saw this he said to himself if this man were a prophet he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is that she is a sinner Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him five thousand or five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, and he said to Simon Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she, this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little love is little but whoever has been for whoever has been given forgiven little love loves little then jesus said to her your sins are forgiven the other guests began to say among themselves who is this who even forgives sins jesus said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace and that concludes Luke 7, 31 through 50. And so that also concludes the Bible with Frisco for today. Tomorrow we are going to be starting Ruth, the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. And we will be going 1 through 4. And Luke 8, 1 through 25. Father, I just thank you and uh, thank you for the blessing. Uh, the gift of your word, the blessings that you have bestowed upon me to be able to read your word. And thank you that I'm reaching each and every individual out there and also all the people around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. All right, this here has been Shenandoah Briscoe with the Bible, uh, with the Bible with Briscoe saying, God loves you and so do I. So come back tomorrow and See me then because, well, I'll be here and I hope that you are too.